with hand tools in the old lumberjack days. Mm -hmm. They were not able to cut into the bottom of the tree because the grain would curve at the roots. The roots only go into the top so because that's mm -hmm. where the water is. Mm -hmm. And as the wood gets bigger, the or as the tree gets bigger, the wood compresses at the bottom and gets hard to cut into. They wanted to get a little higher where the grain was straight and softer. To do that, they would cut notches in the trunk with an axe, insert springboards in the notch, stand on the springboard to get a little higher, two guys at each end of a handheld cross-cut saw. Yeah. Two to three days to cut down a tree using that method. Mm -hmm. On the left, you'll see a stump with notches from the springboards. Mm -hmm. yeah. Also notice a tree growing out of the stump. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What happens is a seed will fall off a tree onto a log or a stump. Mm -hmm. New tree will grow out of the old dead wood. Mm -hmm. The old dead wood provides nutrition for and nurses a new tree to life. We call them nursing stumps or nursing logs. Mm -hmm. I've seen competitions like that when they try to do that, uh, the, the lumberjacks. They do the competition, they, they cut, cut, put this thing in, and then they keep on going up the tree. That's right. Exactly. Uh, That's the old tradition, right? <laughs> but now everybody cheats. I mean, you know, so how do I... Just in this park, they, they can continue this, but all over, they, they don't do that anymore. I mean, you know... Well, they use power tools now. Yeah. They can use whatever they want, right? They use this gigantic cutter thing from yeah. a big truck, and it just yeah. snips it. Yeah. Yeah, I know that in Thailand they used to have a law that you couldn't cut. That's what Thailand was famous for knives now, with blades, because you couldn't cut the, uh, you you couldn't use a power. You couldn't use even a what do you call it a a chainsaw to cut cut anything down. I don't know if it's changed now, but uh, not uh, the bigger trees with the uh, because it's so some of the wood is too hard to cut into. Mm -hmm. So these tall trees are okay. So uh, you're looking at uh, indigenous growth to our environment here for the most part. But uh, ornamental flowering trees and flowers and what have you were added to make yeah. more of a park setting and some beautiful examples of uh, um, landscaping work as well. On the left, the trees with the thick coarse bark with the deep ridges on it, mm -hmm. yeah. those are coastal Douglas fir. Technically a member of the Pinus family, truly a pine tree, but most people call them coastal Douglas fir. They're named after legendary Scottish botanist David Douglas, who identified them in 1829. Uh, one exposed to nitrogen 15 from the ocean which gets into salmon, they come back, spawn and die and become part of the ground, fertilize the forests of the west coast from California up to Alaska. The trees eat salmon. Mm. Oh, wow. And they grow taller and faster than trees that don't oh. get the nitrogen 15 from the ocean. Oh, so they get the omega-3 there. Oh, okay, I got you. On the left, that's a western red cedar with the soft fibrous bark yeah. with the yeah. straight yeah. lines yeah. in it. Yeah. The green is flat like a fern instead of needles like other evergreens. They're called fronds. Yeah. The branches curve upwards at the end of the branches. Um, so basically these trees are pescatarians. Uh, uh, yeah, they are. They're pescatarians. You're right. They eat salmon. Um, there is a tremendous accumulation of salmon waste along the west coast. And when they come back and spawn, they die and fertilize everything. Mm. That's why the forests are so healthy along the west coast. It's a process that's happened since the last ice age. Do they come up the rivers? Yep, they come up all the rivers and along the west coast. Up, uh, they spawn the and then they die right after they spawn yeah. and they rot and fertilize everything. So I guess we always shouldn't be carnivores. We should be pescatarian. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm no, I am. I'm, I'm, I'm doing. I, I just do the, what the trees do. I want to yeah, be yeah. like a tree, strong, blah blah, oak, uh, <laughs> something like that. No? No? Okay, we're gonna. I totally agree with you, and I understand what you're saying. That's very funny, though. It's it's a funny way of putting it, but it's true. I'm just saying, aren't you supposed to follow nature? I mean, yes. okay, I heard... Yeah, well, nature's setting a good example for us. But I saw this, uh, not store, I, I did a, a workshop up with, way up in Quebec, you know, where the geese fly home. And the, and the, they were telling me up there, you know, the, the toxinous people there. I'm sorry. It's Stanley way in the background. Oh, yeah. Sorry to distract you. Oh, sorry. But, but they were saying that when the, when the, when the, when the colonizers first came, they were all dying because they didn't know what to do. But what, the, what, what they just saw the animals do, the animals... Uh, they would eat berries, and so, yes. um, and that's what, that's that's how, that's, that's how they didn't get discovery and all this, all this that stuff. So they started to eat. Right. Them. So that's what they started to do: do what the animals did. That's right. And that's what you're supposed to do. do well, there's also stuff. vitamin C in the trees here. Oh, really? Which cured the scurvy, uh, and it was given to them by the natives. Uh, yeah, there's 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 vitamin C in the fronds of the cedar, and the needles of the hemlock, and. Native, uh, first, or sorry, uh, Europeans didn't know that until they were told by the First Nations. Hemlock. Yeah, well, no relation to the poison weed that oh, kills Socrates. <laughs> hemlock tree. <laughs> okay, yeah. Not, no relation. I'm going to show you what hemlock oh, trees look like. Tree, tree different from the weeds. Yeah, okay. To right. Completely unrelated. Just the name is the same. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. I'll show you what hemlock trees look like. So this is a very big park, you're saying. Huge. 
Yeah, 1,001 acres or 405 hectares. A very popular feature of Stanley Park is the seawall, which goes all the way around the park. Mm -hmm. 10 kilometers or 6 miles long. It was built by a Scottish wall builder, a master mason by the name of James Cunningham, who hired unemployed workers off the street to help him build it. Mm -hmm. Most of the work was done at nighttime when the tide was low, and he used to come down here dressed in his pajamas to authorize the work. <laughs> but what impresses me is that is there's so many trees. That's oh, yeah. Well, I mean, this is the forest of the West Coast. This is what it's like, right? We have deciduous trees here, too. But the coniferous um, evergreens where, dominate. It's, it's cool. who? deciduous trees that have leaves that drop in the winter. That's the definition of a deciduous tree. Okay. Um, you're talking about berries. We have a lot of edible berries here. A lot of people don't know you can eat the berries off this bush. That's mm -hmm. Salisle. Mm -hmm. First Nations like those. Yeah. The, the, Berry has a fuzzy skin, looks like a blueberry, but has a fuzzy skin. Mm -hmm. Re flavor is reminiscent of a cross between a blueberry and a currant. Okay. High in antioxidants oh. and vitamins. Very healthy and nutritious and very tasty. Do they market it? No. Nobody knows that you can eat salal berries. I know because I, I ate them when I was a kid, but First Nations ate them. So um, you could grow them in your garden? Uh, well, it's a wild plant here, yeah. to our yeah. native to our environment, but I'm sure yeah, you could grow them in your Therefore, garden. It would How do you spell it? S-A-L-A-L. So I'll. Okay. Okay. Another joke for you. Okay. When I was up there with the, with, with with those autochthonous people up there, way up there, way up in Quebec, yeah. uh, we were it was winter time. We was going past the road, and the, and the woman said, "Stop!" And she got out and picked some picked some. I guess it was cranberries, stuff, whatever she yeah. picked. We came cranberries. back in, and we said, "Wow, she has good eyes." And I said, "No, nah, it's just memory. She knows where it's at." Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You you kind of grow up here, and you get to know what you would. You know, you develop a knowledge of stuff. That's how the First Nations did it, right? Mm -hmm. That's how I learned, just from experience. Wow. So um, you've lived here all Since your life? 1969, I moved here from Southern California, where my mom was from, but I was born in North Miami, Florida, where my dad was from. Oh, okay. All right, so on the uh, Britain moved their naval operations for the entire Pacific Ocean, from Chile to the southern end of Vancouver Island in 1865. That became Canada's National Naval Fleet in 1910. They're still there. Mm -hmm. Squamalt Naval Base, but we have a remnant of, Van of Stanley Park being a uh, British military reserve. So the Royal Canadian Navy also have this reserve on the right, named after Captain George Vancouver's ship, the Discovery. Mm -hmm. So it's called the HMCS Discovery. It's built on the Tsleil-Waututh First Nation burial grounds, and they nicknamed it Dead Man's Island. Mm -hmm. Now we're approaching uh, probably the best viewpoint in Vancouver at sea level, the totem poles. The we totem this, poles? Yeah. Um, I'll tell you about them, but uh, we got this fabulous view on the port of Vancouver, Canada Place with the sails on the top. Ten points on the five sails represent Canada's ten provinces, Newark Convention Center building, and all the other stuff. And uh, over here on the left is the cricket club. They play cricket in the field here in the summer. And now we're approaching the totem pole. So I'm going to tell you about these. Oh, yes. This is going to be a stop on our tour, and we can be here for about 15 minutes, maybe 20 if you want, and then we'll head out. But before I tell you about these, I just have to go use the washer. Okay. And so do I. So, yeah, well, so let's go do well, that. Well, we all jump out. There we go. Let's have a week. 